Okay, you're good. We're on. We're both. You're going to have to that out, right? Recipes. You guys don't know what to do on certain nights and things like this. And, and um, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is in the cooking for congregation is actually how to build your ministry and how to bring more people into your ministry through cooking classes. And so we started out 10 years ago. I've been working for the First United Methodist Church. And uh, I started out as a food manager. And my position was just to oversee... 15 to 18 little old ladies in their cock pockets and make sure that they kept all the cat hair out and all the cat food. Yes. And that is a true story. Yes. That woman bring in a jello mold and it had cat food in it. Yeah. So I politely, you know, it fell off in the floor and uh, went into, into the trash. She came back and she was like, What happened to my jello? And I said, oh, it was so good. Me and my staff we ate it. We had to eat in the back. I mean, it was wonderful, you know. And then she wanted to bring us more stuff. I was like, no, 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 it's okay. You know, yeah. yeah, so all day long we're going around going, meow. Um, we're going to teach you a little bit about uh, how we started uh, this, this class. People were, were talking about, okay, I've been a chef for 20-something years and, and utilizing family. And I had my beautiful family here, my boys. And we wanted to get them in the kitchen. And we wanted to start with them. And so... Kim has always been just phenomenal with doing things with the boys and getting them interested in cooking and, and getting them in there. And so we started talking and we said, man, we really need to take this out into the community, into the church. And so we started God's Growing Gourmets. And we started teaching kids ages of four. And people said, they're out of your mind. You know, they did kids at four years of age, they're not going to want to cook. These kids, I would rather teach four-year-olds than I would rather teach all of you in here right now. We have, uh, we capped it at 12 at that point, right? It was 4 to 12 yes. that we were doing. And of course, you know, 12 and 13, you become a stinky teenager, and you kind of know it all. It's like, oh, that's not how my mother does it. <laughs> well, your mother's not here. You know? I'll tell you how it's done, you know? But the little kids, they just ate it up. And so we're going to go through some things and show you that about God's Horn Gourmets. But also, it developed into... The adults came to us and they said, hey, what about us? You know, we, we need some specialty classes. I said, okay, well, what do you want to learn? Well, we had people that have celiac disease, which is the gluten-free. So at this time, there was no place where we live. We're on the other side of Austin. And so Austin was a close place, two-hour drive. 
to go over and get a loaf of gluten bread. It was $15 for a loaf of bread then. Mm -hmm. And so they said, can you teach us how to do this, how to make these things? So I said, sure. So we started doing the classes. And all of our classes are free to our neighborhood. We don't, we don't charge for anything for the adult classes. And uh, by doing that, of course, it opens up the doors to your ministry, to your church. We call it backdoor ministry. You're not in your face, you know, oh, I'll praise Jesus, praise God, you're here. We just explain to them, we're here to do a service for you because I love you. I'm a Christian. We'd love for you to be a Christian. This is our facilities. You know, if you want to come back, you want to learn more, learn more. But we found out that a lot of uh, our churches, and I'm sure with your churches too, you have BDS and you have all these different programs and you're trying to get new families because without your families, your church can't grow. You know, there's just no growth there. And um, I'm sure you know yourself, as a church gets older, if you don't have those younger families coming in, it's, it's, it's dying out. So they said, we've got to get them in. So they have BBS. BBS comes in, you got 4,000 kids, and you might get one family out of that BBS. In fact, I was talking with Michael. He said his church completely stopped doing BBS because of that. And it ends up being a glorified babysitting service, and they just go from church to church to church, and you're not actually getting that family pool in. So we looked at it. We just had our BBS. We had one family from BBS last week that said, oh, we're going to commit. We love your church. Well, out of 30 kids that we had in our cooking class, we got five families. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think about that. When you have 500 kids and you have one family and we have 30 kids and we have five of them to come in. I mean, it's just a huge outreach because the kids are so just, they're so excited, you know, and they, they want to learn, but they don't realize they're learning about the Lord. And we were able to take this ministry outside our doors of our church, and we now go to schools. And so we go to the schools, and the great thing about living here in Texas is we have that separation of church and state, but we can still go in. We just take our name tags off. We're still wearing our chef outfits. Um, we are representatives of the church, but we are not there to preach to the kids. And so we explain to them. We do these special little cooking classes, and I'm able to tell them, I love you. And there's somebody else in this world that loves you. And at any time that you don't feel loved, I want you to realize that there's a higher power that loves you. And if you want to know more, just get a hold of me and I'll tell you some more about it. And that's how you can do that backdoor ministry. And pretty soon these kids are coming into families or coming into the church. And so it's a great way of catching them off guard and pulling them in. So am I boring everybody so far? No. no. Let's see what, what we got going on here? Yes. Yeah. So um, one of the other other uh, ministries that uh, people came to us and they said, well, recently I'm a widow or a widow. Didn't do, I don't know how to cook. My spouse cooked all my shop. life. I don't even know how to shop. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, our church has always been the motto, see a need, fill a need. So we said, okay, there's a need here. What do we need to do? Uh, we'll take these individuals and we'll have them come to the church. We'll get in a church van and we're going to go to the grocery store. And we're going to show them how to pick fresh produce. Mm -hmm. Some of these people didn't have a clue even where to go in the store. Mm -hmm. They don't know that you can start on this aisle here and go up and down on your list. They didn't know how to write a list. So I mean, just these simple, basic things. You can literally see them losing weight. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're not eating I mean, at all. They weren't eating at all. They, they didn't. didn't. The and neighbor we didn't want to go out to eat single, and they didn't know how to get. They were afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. And so when we made this class, it was like supposed to be five people. Forty of them showed up. Mm -hmm. We were shocked. And we were cued in because they were coming to our Wednesday meals. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been, yeah. and they start showing up. And so you see those regular faces. And of course, we know that they just mm -hmm. lost their spouse because we also we do all the bereavement there. And so we are connected in our church as far as knowing. There's 3,200 members in our church, by the way. There's 2,700 strong, and we have maybe three volunteers that actually help us through the whole church. You guys have probably had that same <laughs> thing, you know? And it's like, there's our, our number one, Mildred, 98 years old, bounced Methuselah on her knee, you know, and she's there for us with anything. Were they all men? <laughs> no, they weren't. Believe it or not, there was a lot of women there was that the men nice. actually did everything. And so that was shocking. Mm -hmm. You know, it really was. And so by talking to them, we found out it went even further. They don't know how to pay bills. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a clue. And I will contest to you right here, right hand to God. 
my beautiful wife here got spinal meningitis and almost died when my babies were three and one. Mm-hmm. And during that time in the hospital, you didn't ask him, you didn't you nothing got him. paid because <laughs> I don't pay, I don't do any of that stuff. That's her thing. That's all paperwork. And so this kind of hit home to me. You know, these people, they didn't know how to pay the bills, didn't know how to do anything. And so that opened a whole other ministry, taking these people aside, helping them with their bills, letting them know just the fact that somebody loves them enough to bring them in. And to actually do that was just phenomenal. You know, they're like, wow, you really do that? You know, out of, out of your busy schedule? And yeah, you know, really that will take care of you. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. And um, I'm sure you guys know, as well as I do, that the kitchen, we, we call it our water cooler. We don't have a water cooler in our office or anything. The kitchen's a water cooler. I can't be at the stove if somebody's not there at my door wanting to talk. And I know more about what's going on in my church than the pastors know. I guarantee you, I know what's going on with who, who is sick, who, before anybody else in the church. And so we have our staff meetings, and they're asking what's going on. So I'm telling them, this is going on with so-and-so, and this is happening. And like, how do you know? Well, come down to the kitchen, hang out. I mean, that just seems to be the safest place for some of the people. They want to come in, and you know, it's, I guess they feel safe around Chef D, you know, because I try to be a protector and love everybody. You know, I, I look scary on the outside, but I'm gooey on the inside. Um, you guys still bored? You still with me? Okay. Then that'll conclude it for today. <laughs> 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 there we go. So this is a children teaching children. We uh, set the kids down and we explain to them about the math skills. You know, you guys all know that their math is a very important thing. They're like, oh, I hate math. It's not that hard. It's fun. And so we explained to them about, of course, measuring and, you know, just getting in there and getting their hands dirty in the kitchen. Now, we are blessed where this picture is taken. This is outside my kitchen. We have a little alcove with coffee machines, and my kitchen is actually behind here. Well, our insurance will not allow anybody in the kitchen cooking if they're underage. Okay, plain and simple. So what do we do? We just, we have all of our stoves and our ovens and we give them a tour. We'll take them through the kids. Oh my God, they love having a tour of the kitchen. You know, they can just do that all day. Mm-hmm. Take them through there, wander around, and then we come out and we have some wonderful little tables, the little four foot tables just to their size. Got the little chairs, everything is dropped down for them. And we go into teaching them the most important things, hand washing skills. Sanitation. Sanitation, you know, <laughs> so it's the most Teach important them. thing in, in cooking. And these kids will come back. Oh, yeah, we've gotten calls. They told me to wash my hands before I made dinner tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they're watching them. They're saying, you know, Mom, I saw you. You know, you were touching your hair, and you're cooking. It's like, I'm not going to eat it. And they're like, what are you touching my kids? And I said, I'm teaching them the proper techniques. You know? And again, it's these simple things that these people, I mean, it's amazing. It's just like you guys are here today. It amazes me that you want to know this stuff because I love it. I love teaching people, but I didn't know that I was really an educator in any way. I mean, I just, and these kids are the same way. I mean, if you just love on somebody, they'll open up to you. You know, they're perceptive and and they'll, they'll absorb this. So we take the kids and we start teaching them these different skills. And I explained to them, I said, now, these cooking classes are not your regular cooking classes. These kids go into these, they have them, well, they have them everywhere too. And they'll take kids and they'll give them a little piece of celery and they put the peanut butter on there and they put the little raisins on and they go, this is cooking. It's ants in the log. <laughs> now, my kids, we're making homemade lasagna noodles. We're making sauces. We're making breads. We have a stack of things of the recipes and stuff we brought along with us. We do things like sleepy dogs. See, they, you know, um, kids, I mean, we just have some good recipes. They make their own dough. They like to get their hands. Make through. every bit. Oh, yeah. If you can get the kids sticky and do it. And the adults. Oh, my God. The parents, they want to come because they're not quite sure. They want to leave their kids here. You know, they don't know anything about the church. You tell them, hang on the back there. You know, see what's going on. Or you have a little girl, but she's crying. This happened to us. Devastated. Man, hanging on mom's leg. Didn't want to leave. I said, well, you know, just sit with her. Pretty soon, the little girl was real tense. She was into it. Mom got to take a couple steps back in the back for pretty soon she forgot all about mom. It was great. You know the class girl runs up and gives me a hug. Mm-hmm. Oh Chef D, thank you. I love you. I can't wait till tomorrow. Oh. Mom was like, wow. Yeah. That's you know, that's what it is. But we try to get the parents involved in it too as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Let them stay, get their hands sticky and gooey and it's great because I have them up on sugar and turn them loose. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 
pretty much with the kids, you can teach them anything. It doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as you're doing something with them and you're showing them interest and love, I mean, they are there. You can be doing anything. I don't care what it is, but we're going to give you guys, we have a stack of recipes and things that are tried and true. have been doing for 10 years. And also, since everybody came in here today, Kim and I wrote a cookbook, and I brought extras for everybody. Hey, these, these people on camera don't get it though, do they? Had to be here. You get one, Greg. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Greg, Greg, no, no cookbook for you. I came in half, halfway. So. In here, there's a whole section on cooking for kids, and so there's some wonderful recipes in here, but. There's also cooking for a crowd or a few hundred Methodists. Right? <laughs> Methodists, whatever, you know, we're all Christians. So there's some wonderful recipes in here that you can take back and utilize. And also, I want to give you guys our business card. At any time, you guys can contact me, email me, phone me, whatever, say, hey, I don't know what's going on. You know, I give me a recipe, you have any ideas. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're all brothers and sisters, we're here for each other. And we want you guys to know that we're here for you. Recipes seem to be our specialty and kind of doing the education thing. Kim's wrote books. We have thousands of cookbooks in our collections. So we can help you out with whatever you want. I mean, I don't care what it is. We can come up with a recipe. I even have recipes for doing ants, crickets. We take the Boy Scouts out and do a survival type thing. You know? Oh yeah, we have full, full pigs on. Um, I hate this because I'm tooting all the morning. I hate doing this. I am not. I'm behind the scenes, you know, I'm sure you guys are. Whenever we have a big banquet and everybody's out there, they start, oh, Chef Daryl, come out, you know, and I'm like, it's not me. I send the dishwashers out there, you know, send everybody else out because I've done my thing, you know, and, and I've heard time and time again, I'm just part of the cog in the wheel to make it happen, but I hate being out there. I'm not a glory hog. Here, sit down. We generally do them from 10 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon because that way they don't have to. We do them in the summertime because right. it's really hard to get them during the school year. And they don't have to get up too early for one. And for two, that gives them time to eat what they've made. So that's kind of their lunch. You know, uh, some of them will save it and take it home. I'm on mom to try it. Or they'll eat half of it. Or, you know, we try to make three recipes in that time, two or three, depending on how many steps there are, how difficult it is. But uh, you know, it gives them time because they, if their hands are dirty and they're in the dough, they got to get up and wash them. You know, they have to use their little, you know, five to 10 years old, or 12 years old. They have to get up and wash their hands. We'll, we'll take about, you know, 20, 30 minute break. Let them, the boys will take them down to the gym and just let them run, burn off some of that energy from sitting. You know, if you've ever been in school, they don't, their attention span is only so long, even when you're cooking and having fun. So, but we do it for three hours. We could probably do it all day. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I have games and stuff that we've ma I've made up out of a food pyramid, and you know, we do a treasure hunt, and we'll get into that. But, mm -hmm. but three hours is long enough for our staff to deal with, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we also we have we have an amazing staff of guys. I have three guys that work for me that are <coughs> school teachers, retired NCIS, police officers, this kind of stuff. So everybody is in that protective mode. I mean, we're all we love the kids. You have a Boy Scout. Um, phenomenal guy and so while we are doing the cooking lessons they are grabbing the boards grabbing the bowls or taking them back they're washing them they're preparing and they're taking on stuff and uh, some of the things that if, if you guys want to start your own cooking classes real easy we use these here we went down and US Foods has them uh, Cisco and these things the little chop mats well they have small ones and they have large ones I usually do a large one and I set two kids on each side and phenomenal, the kids can use these. We pop them up, tables clean, they go and clean them, we bring them back, set them down. And uh, we, we give these as prizes also afterwards. We try to give something to the kid each time. If it's not a chop mat, then we have rolling pins. They get their very own rolling pin or their own little whisk. Or the best thing that we have here is we went online and we found a company that had these uh, chef hats and paper. Yeah. And we have pink ones. They used to have a pink, ones. they don't have pink anymore. 
and they yeah. and I was able to get these for a dollar ninety nine a piece. Wow, and they had their little they, oh they're they're gorgeous. I got some beautiful pictures. <laughs> and so everybody is wearing their little chef hats and aprons. I think I have pictures of girls in some of the paintings. And they're just oh my god, they love.